Hello everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful Saturday. It is June um, 25th and I'm coming again with another video. I had this on my mind today and I decided to just go ahead and share it. Um, and today is also the 21st day of the liquid fast. So this is our last day and I'm so looking forward to eating solid foods again and to having salads and just eating fruit whole I feel like that's the best way to um, eat it however I do feel like doing fast of different forms is very beneficial to your health and giving your body a break um, but I definitely I feel like it went by fast but yeah I'll do that in, in our like final um, review of our 21 day fast video but um, I'm coming today because I know, I know a lot of times when people think about veganism or raw vegan, eating like a plant-based diet, they may feel like it's, you know, they, they think of the word restriction because I'm noticing that word a lot more lately. And I feel like it's not that the lifestyle is restrictive. Um, I feel like the mindset is what makes it restrictive, not the lifestyle, not the food, in my opinion, because if that's the case, I feel like it can be, it's all relative. Like when you look at a person that eats a standard American diet, I mean, that can be restrictive too, if you think about it, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just speaking from my perspective and my experience when I transitioned from, um, from eating, you know, meat into becoming a vegeta a vegetarian or vegan, um, I it opened me up to a new, you know, a new type of uh, mindset and world. Um, I was I became more open to trying different things because you know when you are becoming vegan that you're not eating the dairy, you're not eating the meat, you know, so you have to find substitutes. So it challenged me to become more creative, you know what I'm saying? Because you do have to find different ways to create dishes. It's actually fun in a way. So it challenges your creativity. It opens you up. There's so many different fruits and vegetables that I did not know exist. Because I was, when I did eat the way that I used to eat with the, you know, the standard American diet, you know, um, I stuck to the same foods. I stuck to what I like and I stuck to the same foods. But, you know, when I had to, you know, when I changed my diets, it opened me up to a new type of world in a way, you know, and it was just different. I felt more open and I was eating more different varieties of foods because you have to you know because you're not you know you don't have that comfort of the same type of ingredients or the same type of food you don't have that same familiarity and comfort so you have to step outside of it you know what i'm saying so i say that the word restriction i feel like just generally speaking we have to be mindful of the words that we use because what you say that uh, what you say becomes reality, you know, what you believe is what you end up seeing. So I feel like when you use certain words, you just have to be mindful because it then can become a restriction. I feel like it's more so a mindset, you know, you know, like some people may, may not feel a restriction in whatever food, you know, they choose to eat, you know regardless of if they eat meat or not. And some may do feel that way, but I feel like it's more so the mindset and what you feel. And I feel like the restriction comes about why people, and because I can identify with that, is when it comes to social settings. Because, you know, that's the way that we, you know, tend, naturally, I feel like people tend to socialize through food, going out to eat, having parties together with food, having, 
you know, going to a restaurant together, celebrating things with food. So when you start, stop eating in the way that you, maybe your friends or your family are eating, then you may feel alienated. You may feel isolated. They may not really understand your new lifestyle and don't get why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. So you may feel, you know, a little, you know, a little like a barrier, but I feel like this, I feel like, you know, that's why it's important to have support groups. That's why it's important to connect with people who actually share that, you know, that lifestyle um, so that you can have some sense of support. You don't feel the need to, you know, maybe eat things that you really know that's not best for you and you really don't want to eat it, but you find yourself going back to it because of the social being into the social circle. Another thing is, is that we are way more advanced than we put, give ourselves credit for. That's not the only way that we can connect with people and socialize is through food. You know, we could connect through different ways. We can socialize in different ways. Of course, through talking, of course, through other things that we that we could connect with each other. Some people love to dance. Some people love to sing. Just there's other ways that you could connect with people besides food. We don't have to make it a barrier. Even though I do understand that when you change your diet, it does something to your. It does something to you on a on a mind, body, and spirit thing. It, it does change you. It does affect your, your your mind, your body, and your spirit in a lot of ways. And you have to, you know, in some ways, you know, you start noticing your, the changes that you have. You may not be as moody. You may notice how that affected you, the way you ate before and the way you felt after. And you see now see the effects of the people around you. And you're like, yo, you, you just notice a difference. But I still don't feel like you should make that... Um, a barrier because that's something that I am learning too. You know what I'm saying? We are we are way more advanced than that. We don't have to that's not the only way that we have that we can feel connected to people. I, I, I just feel like it's important to not create a barrier in that ways and that's why I feel like it's important to have a group of people around you um that share that kind of common commonality so that you don't feel so alienated. You know what I'm saying? And that we don't have to, you don't have to make it a food thing when we get around people, even though I do know that at times you can just not be eating and somebody could be like, why you're not eating? And it could come off very awkward. So I get those situations, but I just feel like, like I said before, um, there's way we are, we, like I just said, like you can um, connect with people in more ways than just food. Um, but, and another thing I feel like, probably cause, uh, you know, feels like a restriction is, um, there like, especially when you're, um, when you're going from vegan, when you're going from like vegetarian to vegan or whatever, stand American to vegan, or even raw vegan, there may be some dishes that you can't really have. Um, you can't really have as a raw vegan or vegan because it has certain ingredients and supplies, but that's where creativity come in. That's where creativity come in because there may be some dishes that you feel like you cannot have as a vegan or raw vegan that you may be able to create. It may not be the exact same, but it can be a very creative spin to that 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 dish that you used to maybe eat as you when you were growing up. And I know that some people may struggle with um, when they go out and there's a there's a, a a menu that they see that has mostly raw on there however there may be one ingredient that's not raw i feel like this if you strive i know for me i strive to eat 100 percent raw however i understand that you know i live here in america i don't you know I, one of my goals is to grow my own food but i don't grow all my i don't grow my own food you know i go to the store a lot we go to farmers markets we go to like co-ops and stuff but we're not growing all of our food you know what i'm saying um and another thing we do go out time to time again so we can't guarantee that we are actually getting the um getting all raw they may everybody's ha has a definite everybody has their own definition and levels to vegan and, and raw you know everybody has their own take on that so I strive for 100% raw. However, I know that there are times 
where things may not be 100% raw. Like, for example, when we get our, you know, for our wraps, we use seaweed. I love seaweed. We use the seaweed. And a lot of times in the store that we go to, they don't have the unroasted. When they do have the unroasted, it's like the small packet of like 10 or something like that. It was a real small, the smallest pack that they got. You know, it's not like the big pack. The big pack normally is the roasted and they taste the same. But, it's, you know, the roasted is, of course, had been cooked, you know, been roasted. So we use that for our, our, our wraps that are raw, but we use the seaweed that's roasted. But, you know, we still eat raw. That doesn't discredit the all the whole foods that we eat. So don't, I feel like this. If you if you want to eat out somewhere or if you want to go somewhere and you and they have the meal is mostly raw and you want to eat it just eat it it's not it doesn't dismiss or discredit what what journey you're on or anything like that so don't get hung up on that and personally I prefer to eat at home more so anyway it's nice to go out because you know they don't have as many raw restaurants where I'm at you know what I'm saying but it's nice to go out and get served or whatever like that, you know, so, and, you know, just sitting down and enjoying the, you know, the ambiance or whatever like that. But at the end of the day, it's nothing beats a home, a home prepared meal. Nothing beats that. You feel me? Because we, the seasonings that they tend to have at the restaurants is more catering to all the masses and the, the and we're very simple with our, you know, with our preparations. Um, but that's what I have to say about that. And then I feel like another thing is the restrictions that people may think about. And I'm, and I'm kind of thinking about it from the perspective of um, a raw food. Is, but I feel like anybody can relate to that, even the vegan or whatever like that. But you can still you can still make it work as a vegan eating cooked foods. But um, but even that can be tough sometimes. But um, but. With the traveling thing, I feel like if you if you prepare yourself and if you are open to the changes that may come about when you're traveling, then it won't be that much of an issue. There's so much information. There's so much education online. We can Google. We can go on YouTube. We can do so much. We can just do so much. There's so much information about how to travel when you're raw. There's this, uh, I believe there's this guy named The Raw Advantage. He has, he travels all the time and he's a raw foodist and he travels all the time all across the world and he, I think he even has a book about traveling when raw and one of the things that he brought up was the fact that um, a lot of times people have more of a hard time when they're not seasoned and traveling. They don't know what to look for and things like that. But I feel like if you prepare yourself, you're open to an understanding that sometimes all you want to eat is fruit and nothing is wrong with that. Because like I tell you, when I was work, you know, working outside of the home, um, there was times where I didn't have time to, you know, prepare a meal. So, you know what I did? I got my bag and I threw all kinds of fruits and stuff in there. And that was my meal throughout the day was all kind of fruits and it's not a big deal for me i know that some people they don't see fruits as a meal but for me i see a fruits as meals okay now there's times where i do want my salad i do want my wrap and i do want my raw sushi or you know my pates but at the end of the day you know that's one of the things that i love about being um um eating a raw diet is that it's so easy like you know if you're hungry and you don't feel like making nothing, you can easily just grab like a piece of fruit or something like that, make a smoothie or whatever you got to do. And that's it. So I feel like if you prepare yourself and you're open to changes because there's times where you may be, be in an environment where um, they may not have the best selection of fruit or they may not have the best selection of vegetables, but they have something and you can work with it. To me, that's not a big deal. And if push comes to shove, if you're in a situation where you need to, you know, you need to eat something cooked and fine, just steam it. Just, you know, just steam, have like some steamed rice or something like that and some steamed vegetables or whatever like that, you know, to get you over for that time period. But like I said, I love traveling. I love and I love the art of cooking, no matter what type of food it is. I love watching those cooking shows and those um, shows where the chefs from um, go around the world um, traveling, um, trying different types of foods. I love those shows. And one thing that I noticed on those shows that even though those uh, the the chefs tend to be like meat eaters, and that doesn't matter to me. Like I don't care about that stuff. 
Um, I love the art of it and like the traveling and the and what you learn from those environments. And one of the things I do notice is that they have a lot of places have so many types of fruits and fruits and vegetables that I have never even heard of. And I'm curious to know about. And it's like, man, I want to go there one day. They have all kinds of different types of fruits and vegetables that I ain't never had before. You know, so I feel like you there is Every almost, I feel like almost everywhere you go, there's going to be some type of fruits and vegetables. It may not be the best, but it's something out there. And if you got to do what you got to do and have some steamed rice with some vegetables, you got to do what you got to do. But that's all I have to say for now. I just wanted to talk about that because I noticed that so many times people, they label raw foods and vegan as restrictions. But I'm like, it's the mindset. It's not the food and the lifestyle. It's the, you know, the, it's what you believe it is. You feel me? Um, and because any, any, any type of diet or lifestyle can, can be restrictive, you know what I'm saying? Um, but that's all I have for now. So thank you so much for watching and you have a great day.